for it. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back, OTB. It is Tuesday at 9 30, which means it is time to talk to our Saints insider. Our guy, Nick Underhill, New Orleans. Football is the site. Sign up yesterday. Uh, it is the best Saints site that you will find. And look, all, all you, the, 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 uh, the, the money all goes to Nick. Okay, so you're not paying any corporate overlords. You are supporting someone directly who's churning out incredible coverage for you. You can feel great about it. Nick Underhill at Nick underscore Underhill. Nick, what's up, dude? Hey, we might have something real to talk about next time instead of, you know, just prolonging this draft in the most boring offseason in Saints history. So I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I know. It, it's okay. It, it, it's definitely been a bit of a grind, right? It, it, it's kind of ironic, too, because at the beginning of the offseason, it was – very exciting one in terms of all these wild moves being made, and now everything is just ground to a complete halt. Uh, but, 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 Nick, that's why you're so great is because you are finding the angles. And there's a guy that we talked about last week that you texted me. Uh, you're starting to come around on a bit maybe as a potential name later in the draft, and that is quarterback Davis Mills out of Stanford. What did your film review of uh, Davis Mills reveal and kind of when do you think would be an appropriate time for the saints to maybe entertain that well I, yeah i watched him because you caught me totally off guard last week by bringing him up and i hadn't seen him yet so i, I wanted to see what you were seeing look I, I think he does a lot of things really well he, he can make all the throws you know he has a big enough arm to get it down the field um you know i think some of his decision making is a little bit shaky you know sometimes he, he just throws into coverage or you know, he'll attack cover four in ways that I've never seen anyone attack cover four. And, you know, it just seems like maybe he's not seeing the defense the way he should. But, look, he, he's only started 11 games in his college career. And I think there's a lot of room for upside there. Um, you see growth from, from 2019 uh, to 2020 just in the way he can hold safeties with his eyes and, and things like that. So I think there's a lot of room for growth for him. I have no idea if the Saints like him or not. Um, but I do think outside of – you know, anywhere outside of the first round, if they saw a quarterback that they like um, that isn't one of the top four or five guys, I, I would be totally in favor of them bringing one of those guys in. And, you know, I think um, with Jameis there, you, you have a little bit of room to develop somebody. And once someone's in the building, I, I don't think you should be tied to them regardless of the cost of acquisition. So if the Saints drafted someone in the second, third, fourth round, whatever it is, I don't think that should stop you from bringing Jameis back if he's great this year. Um, you know, I, that's just not the way Sean runs his team. You know, Antonio Pittman found his way out when Pierre Thomas outperformed him. So, you know, once you're in the building, I, I don't think they care. So, you know, e even if it were a high-level pick and Jameis becomes great, you know, you just go with the best player. But I think they need to continue to give themselves options. And, and until they have that guy, just keep bringing them in. And, and who cares what it costs? Just the, the price to get a franchise quarterback – is never too high. And if you burn some picks or burn some money in the process of doing so, you know, that's just the cost of doing business. Nick, before you hopped on, we were talking about maybe the deepest positions in this draft as far as position groups. And I'm going to land on receiver here because as we throw out the names, I mean, you could go maybe even nine deep of guys that could be impact players from day one at that position. Do you agree with that? Do you think it is the receiver position? And, and we were talking about New Orleans being at 28 could get a really good player at that position, even if they were selecting the fifth receiver. All things being equal, I, I would go a different direction. Um, you know, if you get to that point and the, the linebackers are gone and there's no defensive tackle, there's no cornerback, then I think, you know, wide receiver is a, a good place to go. Um, you know, best player available theory has to – Hold to some degree too. So if you, the wide receiver there is way better than anybody else, you, you definitely got to take a hard look at him. And it is a need for the team. I just don't think it's as dire as some of the other spots. And look, I, I've said this other places. We, we might have talked about it here before. You know, I do think that there's an element of, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these guys on the team being held back just a little bit because Brees couldn't throw the ball down the field at all last year. And that's kind of been dissipating since 2017. And, you know, Marquez Callaway in college, the route he did the most damage on was was, was go balls. You know, mm -hmm. they aren't throwing those. He, he was running hitches the whole time. He was here because that, that's what the quarterback could throw. And um, Traquan Smith was more of a downfield player in college. He, he His last year in, in college, he led the nation in yards per target. Um, so, I mean, I just think that there's ways that some of these guys can give you a little bit more explosiveness. But, yeah, I mean, one more guy would, would, would definitely be great, you know, especially you look inside the tight end at 127 yards last year or whatever it was. So, 
you, you're really down to Mike Thomas and Alvin Kamara as your sure things. And one more guy would really help. But I just, I just don't think I would prioritize that over other positions because I think there is a way to go forward with what's on the team. Whereas, you know, a linebacker, you have nothing next to Demario Davis. The cornerback, you don't, you don't have a starter right now, potentially for three or four games. You know, defensive tackle, you have one guy and, and a bunch of maybes. At least at wide receiver, there's a couple guys that have some production that, that you could lean on if other things don't work out. Hey, you mentioned defensive tackle right there, and that is one of the, the positions in this draft that doesn't have that many top-end guys. I mean, Christian Barmore, probably the top-rated, and he's you know into the first-round type guy. So if you go defensive tackle, are you thinking with that second or, or one of the third-round picks? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's they're saying it's a really bad defensive tackle class. And the, the guy from Alabama, I guess, is free-falling. Uh, people are saying he, he doesn't like to be coached and that there's there's some character issues there maybe. So it might not be a good year to, to need one. So, you know, if, if he isn't there, I wouldn't force it at all. It feels like if you go into this draft, like, determined to get a defensive tackle, you might end up making a mistake and passing on one of those receivers you just mentioned. So that, that's not the stuff you want to fall into. And, you know, thankfully, I don't think defensive tackles – at that point, like it is cornerback and linebacker, where maybe you have to force a pick just because there's no other way to do it. And, you know, we've spent the whole offseason talking about cap hell and what that actually is. Like, right now, this is kind of a form of it because they weren't able to plug their needs. Like, they didn't get yeah. the cornerback, the linebacker, the defensive tackle. And now you're going into the draft saying, like, how do they fill these holes? And, and you might not end up being able to go best player available because you have to fill a spot. Huh. And these are the ways that cap hell shows up. It's not cutting Michael Thomas. It's it's being forced to draft a linebacker when there's a better wide receiver. And that might end up with, you know, how this goes. But, you know, they they got to fill those holes one way or another. Uh, talking to Nick Underhill, New Orleans stuff. Football is the site. Uh, Nick, how are you planning in, uh, or excuse me, how are you planning on taking in Thursday's draft? I'll just I'll be in my home in my room. I've got my TV set up, and and you know that's, that's kind of it's really no different. Even at the facility, you know, I usually go off in a different room just because. Look, I don't want to be a weirdo, but I think like the draft just as a whole is a whole process the way it's covered. I think it's the biggest experiment in group think in human history. And Ooh. people start saying things, and everybody's thoughts becomes the same thought, <laughs> and everybody's reading the same draft coverage and the same three guys doing yeah. scouting reports. Yeah. So everybody has the same exact opinion on every single player. So I try to isolate myself from it, and I just don't want to hear it. And I just want to look at things kind of myself and, and see how they fit and, and not be pushing a direction by commentary but from other people. I mean, there you go, dude. I, I, I just allow myself to be pushed every way. I'm like, oh, what did Nick say? What did Jeff say? <laughs> okay, I love it, dude. That all makes sense to me. Uh, look, that's why you should sign up for New Orleans Up Football, though, is that kind of singular thinking. Hey, hey I did want to ask you a question about linebacker because I do agree with you. It's like, okay, who's next to Demario Davis? What are they expecting from Zach Bond? Because last year that was one yeah, of real. the Saints fans' favorite picks, and because he had a first round grade in some places, and you know Wisconsin thought a lot of him, and I know he's kind of an edge rusher there. Is that someone you can see taking a step, or you think he is more pegged for you know something different, maybe a third down edge rusher? I, I think they still see him as a linebacker. I think it's just you know nobody really knows at this point, and I, I don't want to put this out there this way, but, but, you know, kind of the signs that I'm getting, at least for, from some of the commentary, it kind of just feels like maybe he hasn't taken that step to the point where, where it's a hundred percent locked in. They feel good with them. Yeah. Could he still get there? Yeah, I, I think he could, but like last year during camp, you could just kind of see the, the issues with, with the processing, you know, there wasn't that click and go, you know, it's kind of, he's dropping back in his zone and he's, he's evaluating and there's a pause and there's the ball going to the flat and he sees it. And then he goes, it just wasn't, he wasn't seeing things the way he should. And I think the lack of OTAs, the shortened training camp, all that stuff really affected him. And here we go again, coming through it. The players are opting out. You aren't going to have the OTAs. So he's going to lose the work there if, if there isn't on-field stuff. You know, people still showing up maybe regardless. But if they don't, he's going to lose that time. And I think that developmental stuff is, is going to be a big deal for these young players going forward. Uh, you know, if they keep opting out of the OTAs every year, but, the, you know, I know it's the, the coronavirus right now, but it kind of just feels like, hey, maybe maybe they don't want to have to be forced to do the voluntary work. And if that's yeah. the trend, I think it is going to hurt the younger players, especially guys like him. He, he needs all the on-field time he can get. And, you know, maybe he gets there, but I think they're kind of looking at it like, hey, like they, they need another guy. Um, maybe he's he's more of, you know, he's he's not the, the rangy guy that, that I think they need. And 
you saw the effect of it, you know, with Quan last year, and I think that's kind yeah. of the, the type of player they want. And I don't think he's he's going to be that type of guy, regardless. I mean, if Quan didn't like show you what could be, only to being ripped away, it just it it hurts Saints fans' hearts. Uh, all right, last one here, Nick. Expound on what you were just talking about a little bit, because it's something that we haven't talked about a lot on this show. Is players starting to skip some of these voluntary OTAs and kind of how that's changing, not just in New Orleans but around the league? Yeah, look, I, I think it's like a you know for the health thing. If if you're worried about the the virus or whatever, like that's that's 100 percent fine. Um, you know, and, and I think these guys have the right to not show up if they don't want to show up. And if that's what they want to do, that that's good too. But there is there is definitely you know a second layer to that where I think. You know, Cesar Ruiz isn't going to benefit from not practicing. Like, he, he needs to, to practice and, and get his work in. So, hopefully, he finds a way to get that done. And, look, I think it's just like any job. Like, a lot of people, you know, you work from home, and, and if you're a self-starter, that's going to be good, and you're going to get stuff done. I think other people need a structure, and they need to actually go to report the work, to be productive, and to get the best out of themselves. And those people that don't have that, I think they're going to have, you know, issues too. And it's just, that's just the way people are, regardless of what they do. And, you know, hopefully everybody's motivated enough to get it done. But, you know, I think being outside of the building isn't the best thing for, for everybody. Just strictly speaking, football wise, all health things aside, you know, it, it's not the greatest thing in the world. But mm. look, I mean, they're going to have to figure out how to get it done. And, you know, hopefully they do. The man, Nick Underhill, at Nick underscore Underhill on Twitter. New Orleans Football is a site, the best Saints site. Uh, like I said, support Nick, support great coverage, and do yourself a favor and learn all about the New Orleans Saints. Cannot wait for the post-draft breakdowns from Nick. Uh, Nick, thank you so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, all right, so we talk to Nick every Tuesday. Coming up next, it is time for Ask the Bench, brought to you by Cold Delicious Rocky Mountain Blue Coors Light. Uh, so get your questions in the chat. We'll answer them now.